Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are a 10 minute talk that gives a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Sebastian Feldman and he's going to give a talk about 10 Git tips and tricks. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Sebastian some feedback. Sebastian, take it away. 10 Git related tips and tricks uh, you may not know. Um, 10 tips in uh, 10 minutes, so uh, we better get started. Um, like I said, my name is uh, Sebastian. I'm currently working at uh, Czech24 in Munich, Germany. Uh, I started coding with PHP somewhere before the millennium, so I do this for quite a while now. Um, I'm author of the open source uh, PHP backup utility called uh, PHPBU. Uh, you can check it out on GitHub or visit the project website phpbu.de. Um, I'm an active member of the PHP user group Munich. Uh, the organizers are doing a great job and uh, if you are somewhere around Munich, you can join us for pizza, beer and uh, of course some PHP. Um, like some other folks, I say stupid stuff on the internet. Uh, if you're interested, you can uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, so, this out of the way, uh, we are ready to go. Um, this talk focuses on uh, using Git um, on the command line. Also, there are great tools available. I would recommend to make uh, the command line your primary Git interface, at least in the beginning. Uh, some tools name actions differently. Some tools don't support certain actions, and some tools even do weird stuff. So to really get to know Git and make use of its potential, I think it's good to start with the command line, even if some things take longer in the beginning. Um, most certainly, you will um, get to the point where every tool will let you down and leaves you in a mess and only the command line uh, to fix it. So the following 10 tips and tricks will focus on using Git on the command line. Number one, autocompletion. Um, you may know the standard uh, CLI autocompletion with uh, the tab key for commands and path. Um, so if you type uh, GRE and hit the tab key, it most likely will complete to grab. Um, you can get the same thing for uh, Git commands. Um, all you have to do is download the bash script from GitHub, uh, include it in your bash profile or bash rc file, and um, then you can, for example, type git v, hit the tab key, and it should autocomplete to, to git branch. Or if there are multiple options, show them to you just like you're used to. Uh, this is great for people new to the command line and, uh, or a really bad typer like uh, myself. Number two, use aliases. Um, you can use aliases to, to shorten command names or even setting some default parameters. Um, I listed here some of my favorite aliases, uh, for example, using only G for the command git, or GS for git status, or GSS for git status dash S. Um, the last one shown here is uh, doing a little bit more magic. Um, so wherever you are in your git repository file structure, Typing gr will put you right back to the to your root repository directly. So, yeah, you can add aliases for nearly everything and whatever you think is useful to you. So yeah, feel free to to add and search the web for crazy Git aliases. Number three, some uh, Git log tips. GitLog has some great options to make sure you find what you're really looking for. So um, let's just walk through some, some, some examples here. You can um, use git uh, log dash dash name dash only if you want to know which files have, cha have been changed. So and uh, you can use um, dash dash grab uh, to show the dependency tree uh, to visualize your branching. Um, with before and after, you can narrow down the log by date. Um, yeah, 
this is uh, a great way to, to get an overview of what happened in your, your repository. And um, another one for, for git log, um, you can use uh, the regular uh, less commands to search your git log. So just type slash your search uh, term or your search uh, query and um, then you get highlighted uh, the first uh, occurrence and with uh, lowercase n you can jump to the next uh, occurrence and with uh, uppercase n uh, to the pre previous one. Number four, resetting files. For resetting files, you have to remember that the repository file can have three states. Uh, state one is not changed at all. State two is changed and, and not staged. And the third one is changed and staged. So if you use git reset, you have these three options. With uh, git reset dash dash hard, um, you will return to a previous version and discard all changes. So all files will be in state number one, no changes at all. This is great if you totally messed up and just want to return to a previous state of your repository. The second option is the default git reset. This will set your working tree to a previous version and all changes are kept but not staged. So now you can add and commit and uh, change them in a different order. And the third option is git reset soft. This will return to a previous version and all changes will be kept and staged. So the third one. Um, this is great if you want to recommit the last three commits and one big commit, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Number five. This is a short one. Ignore white spaces. Um, looking at divs on the command line can be challenging. Um, I know the feeling, but uh, it's getting easier most of the time if you just ignore white spaces. And you can easily ignore white spaces for git div and git blame as well. Just uh, add dash w and uh, the white space uh, will be ignored. Super simple, but comes in super handy. Number six, I like this one. Partial add. Let's say you make changes to a file and all of a sudden you have to do a bug fix on the same file, but you don't want to commit the changes you made so far. Um, you could stash uh, your changes, create another branch, but maybe the fastest way is just to, to add the changes you want to commit. Git add-p allows you exactly that. You can specify the changes you want to add and only the selected ones will be staged and committed. This is really a good one. <laughs> Number seven, Git aliases. As shown before with the operating system aliases, Git also supports alias for Git commands. You can define those via command line interface or edit your .git config file. I listed some, some examples there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a terrible typer and lazy as hell, so I'm going for all those single character aliases like git l or git b or git c, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, but remember, just like shell aliases, those will only work on your machine. So don't get too crazy with them so you can still use git um, in a pure git environment. Number eight, git rebase. As powerful and great this feature is, Always remember, never rebase commits that have been shared outside your repository. I can't emphasize this enough. Never ever do it. But why use rebase in the first place if the result could lead to you being hated and flamed by your coworkers? Rebasing is great if used properly. If you merge a shared branch, most of the time you are left with merge commits. This is not a big deal and completely safe, but it still messes up the log history a bit. So if you rebase during a merge, Git will remove all your commits since the last merge and reapply them on the current head, leaving you with a clean repository without merge commits, in, in theory. 
if you have never used Rebase before, I encourage you to create a small test repository and play around with some constellations, even those that break stuff, to get a feeling what Rebase does and what the benefits are. Many open source projects maintainers ask you to rebase your pull request, so it is good to know how it's done. Number nine, git amend. Let's say you made a commit and realize you made a typo. You could use git reset to return to a previous version, but there's a faster way. Just pick the typo, stage the file, and use git um, commit amend to change the last commit. Um, just remember, don't change commits that have been shared already. But it's a very easy way to fix some, some typos or a missing file or any small changes you just use the same code message with or, yeah. Number 10, the final one. Let's assume you wrote a unit test um, that you didn't push and went on vacation for a couple of days. And after you return, you merge the latest changes, everything went fine, no conflicts, everything is looking good. But then you realize, somebody broke my stuff. But when? Git bisect to the rescue. Git bisect is a way to find breaking commits easily. You have to, all you have to do is to find a version that worked and mark it as good and mark the current version as bad. Git will then check out different versions asking you if the checked out version is good or bad. Depending on your answer, Git will check out another version until the guilty commit is located. After the commit is located, you can return to your starting point and get a report of your full bisect, bit, bit, git bisect run. <laughs> this is a great way to locate changes that broke something that used to work without debugging the whole application. So, this was number 10. I don't know if we have time for questions or if there are any. Um, nope, no questions. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit JoinedIn and leave Sebastian some feedback.